this is number one. And, and one of the things that causes nutritional deficiency that I want to, again, I want to pull this into grain because I want you to understand the element of nutritional deficiency is that if we look at what can cause this, grain or gluten. So we know that grain and gluten consumption can actually cause nutritional deficiencies, especially for those that are gluten sensitive. And the reason why is that gluten can damage the GI tract, the lining of your gut, which makes it what? It makes you digest and absorb less effectively, so you end up developing nutritional deficiency as a result of damaging your GI tract from a food sensitivity issue. So again, go, go kind of reverse engineer why this can happen. This is one of the main reasons why nutritional deficits can happen. Let's just pull up, a, a, let's pull up slide number one here. I want to show you some research on this very topic. So you, what you can see here is that vitamin and mineral deficiencies are highly prevalent in newly diagnosed celiac disease patients. So people with gluten sensitivity, when they're originally diagnosed, the gluten has damaged their GI tract to such a great degree that on average they have mass scale deficiency. So as you can see in this slide, you know, what we're looking about in, in all the people that were tested, so almost all of the patients, 87% had at least one nutritional deficiency. Okay, specifically, 7.5% of people had vitamin A deficiency. Uh, additionally, 14.5% had B6 deficiency. 20% had folate deficiency. 19% had vitamin B12 deficiency. 67% had zinc deficiency. 46% had iron deficiency. Uh, and 32% had a, a nutritional anemia. Here's the pattern I see in people with gluten sensitivity. Number one deficiency is iron, the most common. This is again, my clinical experience. Iron number two is vitamin B12 and number three is zinc. Those are number one, two, and three in terms of how frequent I, the top three, if you will, for people that come into me that don't know they're gluten sensitive, they're developed heart disease, they didn't even realize that gluten was playing an issue in it, but they were eating it and these are the top three deficiencies. Now, it's important to understand that low iron causes low oxygen, which raises blood pressure. And that's one of the reasons why that can happen. Low B12, as we mentioned earlier, can cause an increase in homocysteine and cardiovascular inflammation. And low zinc causes an increase in oxidation. Oxidation is a byproduct of your chemistry where things become damaged. So if you've ever heard of a, of a, of a free radical or you've ever heard of an antioxidant, zinc is one of the most powerful antioxidants that your body has. It runs and drives a very potent antioxidant system that prevents an increase in oxidative damage, which again, that oxidation is a, is a kind of a precursor, if you will, to the inflammation. So these three are the top three I see contributing to uh, after when people get kind of a recognition that they're gluten sensitive, but they can contribute to heart disease in those different ways. Now I want to put up another slide because I just want to show you one more, one more study here. And this is kind of what it's saying about people with gluten sensitivity. So this was published um, here relatively recently, but you can see celiac disease and non-celiac gluten sensitivity should be followed up closely by for dietary adherence, nutritional deficiencies in the, develop, in the possible development of comorbidities. What does that mean? That means people with this issue should be monitored nutritionally to make sure they don't have or develop nutritional deficiencies because nutritional deficiency leads to comorbidity Comorbidity means other diseases, other health issues that can contribute to problems. So for example, comorbidity for heart disease is increased weight, right? Is being overweight. Another comorbidity for heart disease is increase in blood pressure. Okay, another comorbidity is increased blood sugar, right? So these are things that should be being checked is kind of what, what that research study is saying is that comorbidities need to be checked because nutritional deficiency can cause all kinds of secondary problems that can lead to an increased risk for the development of a number of different types of disease. So that's nutritional deficiency. And again, gluten and grain we know can contribute to that. Now, another thing gluten and grain can contribute to, if we put a number two down here, is it can lead to something called metabolic syndrome. Now, metabolic syndrome is kind of a, um, 
a conglomeration of different risk factors for heart disease. It's a mixture of increased blood pressure, increased blood sugar, and increased weight. So that trifecta is oftentimes called metabolic syndrome, meaning a person's gaining weight, especially central weight, fat around their heart, around their abdominal casing, right? So that, that centralized weight storage is a hallmark symptom of metabolic syndrome, but couple that with, again, with increased blood sugar, okay, and increased uh, blood pressure, and you've got yourself metabolic syndrome. So let's talk a little bit about how grains can contribute to metabolic syndrome. I've got another study here on gluten and metabolic disease. And so you, what you're looking at here is, this is coming out of a journal called the, the, um, the Journal of Nutritional Biochemistry. Again, not a common journal read by a lot of medical doctors. Most medical doctors are sticking to things like Journal of the American Medical Association, New England Journal of Medicine, but, but this is the Journal of Nutritional Biochemistry. So here's, here's kind of a summary. Our data support the beneficial effects of gluten-free diets in reducing adiposity gain, meaning fat gain, inflammation and insulin resistance. So that's the elevation in blood sugar, right? And the data suggests that diet gluten exclusion should be tested as a new dietary approach to prevent the development of obesity and metabolic disorders. So again, this is the summary of this research study, um, basically that grain-free diets, gluten-free diets should be used as a new alternative to approach people when they have elevated central adiposity, elevated inc increased risk for, for, um, for blood sugar or insulin resistance, in essence, prediabetes. So again, what is the thing that happens when most people go to the doctor and, and they say, hey, you know, I've got metabolic syndrome or they've been diagnosed with metabolic syndrome. The doctor says, eat right. Right, so the, the general advice is eat right. What the heck does eat right mean? And so eat right a lot of times comes with a question mark and then you get referred because the doctor's not gonna talk to you about nutrition so they refer you to a registered dietitian. And the registered dietitian does what? Usually they talk to you about nutrition, right? But here's the problem. A lot of registered dietitians are gonna talk to you about increasing grain. They tell you that grain is this wonderful food that reduces your risk of heart disease. Well, I just showed you a major research study published in the Journal of Nutritional Biochemistry that said that grain-free diets should actually be used as a treatment modality for people who are gaining weight and have blood sugar problems. And there are several reasons why. As a matter of fact, at Gluten-Free Society, our, my foundation, there's a reason why two of the doctors on our board of advisors are cardiologists. It's because the connection between gluten and grain and heart disease, metabolic syndrome, is extremely high. And we wanted experts who were trained in nutrition but also trained in cardiology to be able to give their take. So if you're not familiar with Dr. William Davis, who wrote the, the, the best-selling, international best-selling book, Wheat Belly, he's on our board of advisors. He talks about how one of the components of grain, aside from gluten, is a sugar called amylopectin that's actually uh, it spikes sugar and it spikes insulin more than pure cane sugar does. So it's actually more detrimental and so many people eating so much wheat today causing that central adiposity, that central fat storage and that insulin resistance. Another one of our board of advisors, Dr. Jack Wolfson, uh, also referred to as the paleo, paleo cardiologist, has a book by the same name. He's, he's well known all over the world for his stance on overcoming these types of cardiovascular problems with this type of diet change. So it's very important that you understand that not all doctors are ignorant of this fact. Again, it's just that not all of them are running toward nutritional training. And because they don't know it, because they don't have it, um, they don't generally tend to talk about it. And so when you get sent to a registered dietitian who's been trained you know, the old school of thought is use the nutritional food guide pyramid. And this is, you know, the heavy base of that pyramid is, is loaded down with grain. And there's a long history behind that. You know, one of the reasons why grain is so highly recommended in our country by the nutritional agencies is because we take taxpayer dollars to subsidize farmers uh, to grow more grain. And so we've got to have a way to feed all of the people in our country. And grain is just, it happens to be the tax subsidied cheap version to do that. It doesn't mean it's the healthy way to go about it. I mean, look around. Most people today, 50% or more of the population is overweight or obese. And why is that? Why is that if, if people are following the traditional 
eat your grain guidelines, why is it that so many people struggle with cardiovascular disease risks? Why is it so many people struggle with obesity and being overweight and insulin resistance and diabetes? I mean, heart disease is the number one killer. You know, it kind of goes back and forth with cancer. It's the number one killer in the United States. If you exclude autoimmune disease, it's the number one killer. So again, we, we got to have a dietary mechanism behind this. So metabolic syndrome is a very, very real problem associated you know, with grain consumption, uh, as you can see here. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.